What I have before me appears to the untrained eye to be two identical Milwaukee Tool M18 Fuel Gen 3 impact drivers. This one does have some war scars. This one does appear to be brand new. But even beyond that, would you be able to tell the difference? They are indeed different. This is actually a generation 3.5. There's been a revision made to this impact driver. It's been vastly improved over the Gen 3. We discussed the improvements and why Milwaukee Tool made them in this video over here. But what we're doing in this video is addressing the comments and questions from that video there. You ask things like, is it heavier? Is it lighter? Is it bigger? Is it smaller? Is it less powerful? Is it more powerful? And more importantly, how could you tell them apart? We're gonna answer all those questions and we're gonna let you know how you can get your hands on the new and improved impact driver when making your purchase. It's all happening right after this message from our sponsor, VCG Construction. Head on over to the merch store. You get hoodies, t-shirts, hats. Link will be down in the description below. When Milwaukee talked about improving their Gen 3 impact and creating the Gen 3.5, they had talked about either detuning the tool or making it larger to fit that improved anvil and collet system into it. Some of you asked, is it actually bigger? We're gonna take a measurement from, from the back to the edge of the, of the collet. Looks to be 4.603 inches compared to generation 3.5. So generation three and a half is 4.59. So pretty much the margin of error of where I'm placing this caliper is contributing to the discrepancy of measurements. For all intents and purposes and rounding back to front, generation 3.5 seems to be the same as generation three. From bottom to top, we're looking at 9.89 inches with its eight amp hour battery on. Generation 3.5, look at it. Ah, identical. <laughs> Here's a dimension that might make a big difference. Let's take a measurement of the quarter inch hex and see if there's a difference there. The interior of the collet, the quarter inch collet on the Gen 3 impact driver, as you can see here is 0.28. So it's a little over quarter inch. Everyone knows you cannot have two objects occupy the same space at a time. So if we had driver bits that are machined to a quarter inch, this would not be able to fit into the collet. So the collet needs to be a little bigger. That's why you're seeing 0.28 of an inch. The question is, is that a problem? Has the interior dimension on Gen 0.35 been improved? Does this have a tighter tolerance? Let's measure it and find out. No, it does not. And how do we know? Because the caliper is locked down and it fits inside our collet. Matter of fact, there's actually some play. This collet might actually be bigger. It's not much bigger, but it is indeed slightly bigger. It's 0.281. What we do know now is that it wasn't about making the collet on the generation 3.5 any tighter dimensionally. It was indeed about adding that second ball bearing. It was also about adding a different weight or tolerance spring that holds that pair of balls in place in the collet. You know what I find peculiar in having the conversation with Milwaukee Tool? <laughs> they had told us two of the solutions out of the three that were considered, one of those was to make the Gen 3 impact dri driver less powerful, to detune it. Another solution was to make it bigger, okay? Those would have been solutions to solve the problem without having to actually alter or add an additional ball bearing and change the weight of the spring. But I have a question for all of you while we're on this subject. If Milwaukee would have chose those two solutions to fix the problem, wouldn't they have been just giving us the Milwaukee Gen 2 fuel? M18 fuel impact driver, right? It's, it's bigger, 
and it's less powerful than the Gen 3. Do you experience the same problem with the Kali in Gen 2 that you did with Gen 3? I sure did. I had the same problem with this quick insert collet on the Gen 2 than I did the Gen 3. So I don't know, Milwaukee Tool, how was making Gen 3 bigger or less powerful a solution for the problem? We already had that here, and we still had the problem with the collet. So that was, in my opinion, never really an option. But I digress, I'm kind of ranting at this point, because Milwaukee did in fact fix the collet the right way. They added an additional ball bearing and they decided to change the weight of the spring. But a lot of you still asked us, is the Gen 3.5 just as powerful as the Gen 3? Because this thing is a powerhouse. Powerhouse! Well, let's find out. But before we do, I know what a lot of you were thinking, because a lot of you asked us in the comments, Although dimensionally on the exterior, they're almost identical or are identical, maybe there's something going on on the interior that would add or subtract some weight. So what we'll do first is throw them on a scale. Gen 3 with its 8 amp hour battery weighs 4 pounds, 9.8 ounces. Gen 3.5 with its 8 amp hour battery weighs 4 pounds, 9.6 ounces. So it's 0.2 pounds less. Gen 3, bare tool, two pounds, 3.6 ounces. Gen 3.5, bare tool, two pounds, 3.4 ounces. So there is indeed a weight difference in the tools. What could the difference be? Let us know down in the comment section below if you have any thoughts on why there could be a discrepancy in weight. I mean, they're pretty close still, but what do you think's making the difference here? So I know why you all came here. I know what you wanna see. You wanna see some testing of the two tools. For that, I'm gonna need some help. We have an assistant, we'll be running the Gen 3. I will be running the Gen 3.5. They will both be outfitted with Milwaukee's Shockwave line of driver bits. Both tools have fully charged eight amp hour batteries, okay? Both tools will be set on speed three for the first test. Our first test will be driving these quarter inch by six inch lag fasteners. Yeah. Seem pretty close. We might need to do that again. Yeah. Oh, you almost pulled it out. It's strong. Yeah! Get some! We'll go one more time. That's the best of three. So the three lag sample that we've just conducted shows that the impact driver has not been detuned whatsoever. They seem equal in power. Some people will say that this tool, because it's brand new, should have outperformed the Gen 3. Some people will say that as a tool wears in, it becomes more powerful over time. So depending on your school of thought, this impact driver is, is less powerful, or this impact driver over time will become more powerful. It all depends, but only time will tell. Next we'll be running self-feeding paddle bits, or as we call them, spaddle bits. A big weakness of the Milwaukee Gen 3 impact driver was the inability when driving blind holes to retain its bit on retraction. We want to test the ability of both impact drivers to drill its hole, but also to retrieve its bit. We'll run a series of three tests and see who accomplishes the task faster. Once again, our batteries are fully charged. They have both conducted the same amount of work up until now, so they should both be at the same charge level. Yeah.
I drill the fourth hole for good measure. I want to converse with my colleague. How many holes did you accomplish in and out? Half of a hole. So you were able to drill your hole fully but not retrieve your bit? Yeah. Okay. So that, that has been the downfall of this impact driver. When drilling blind holes, the inability to hold on to that impact ready bit. It was horrible. Now some of you may be wondering if these Diablo Speed Demon Spaddle bits are actually machined to the tolerances required for these impact drivers. These are impact ready drill bits. These are made to be run in an impact driver. Okay, the way you know that is because, yes, it's machined like older quarter inch style drill bits so that, yes, it has nice flats for a standard chuck to clamp down on. The difference with these bits and what makes them impact ready and made to be used specifically in an impact driver compared to a standard drill is this here. This ridge that's machined into the drill bit itself, that is put there specifically so that the ball bearings inside an impact driver collet can retain its bit. Doesn't it feel good to know that piece of information? What's actually going on inside the impact driver and how it works in conjunction with these drill bits made specifically to be used with them? It's all, knowledge is power, but I digress. Some of you are thinking maybe this bit is not made to be used with these impact drivers. That's why what we have here are twin flute, auger style, impact ready Woo. drill bits made by Milwaukee Tool, but purchased at the Milwaukee Tool Service Center. That's right. So these aren't knockoffs that was like bought on Amazon. These are the real deal, legitimate, made by Milwaukee to their tolerances and specifications. And look, they have the little cutout for the ball bearing. Right now, what we're going to do, because these are made by Milwaukee, we're gonna run these in, impact ready drill bits with these impact drivers. We're gonna see maybe this Gen 3 can retain this bit better than it did the Diablo Speed Demon. I hope it does. So although the Generation 3 was not able to retain its bit as positively as Generation 3.5, you were able to complete, completely drill. You were able to completely go in and out of one full blind hole. Yes. And then drill a second blind hole, but not be able, be, be able to, to retain the bit, correct? Yeah, I got stuck in the hole. So, so my assistant here got stuck in the hole. It's a technical term. So it seems that generation 3.5 is not only as powerful, it actually weighs less, is dimensionally the same, but does maintain its bit much better. From what we can see here, yes. A lot of you are wondering, how do you tell the two generations apart? The first way to tell the generations apart would be to, if you were buying these impact drivers secondhand on Facebook Marketplace or somewhere used, you are going to want to visually inspect. You're gonna to wanna to get yourself a flashlight. You're gonna to want to inspect inside the collet. In generation three, you will find only a single ball bearing for retention. In generation 3.5, you will find two ball bearings for retention of driver and drill bits. Very, very important. Some of you are saying, hey Vince, I'm not going to be buying this tool secondhand. I'm going to be going to Home Depot or ordering online. How will I know? Is there a new model number on the box? No. 
the model number will be carried over. It will still be, if you're buying Bear Tool, product number 2853-20. Generation 3.5 will be the same as Generation 3 for a model number. Some of you are asking, well, is there version numbers on the tool? Version, version 1, version 2. If we look on the tool itself, you will see your catalog number, your impacts per minute, your RPMs. You are then met with a serial number to determine a version. If we take the tool off of its battery and turn it over, you will see no markings at the bottom as well. So as of right now, number-wise, there, no, there is no way to tell Generation 3 from Generation 3.5 other than visually inspecting the collet. Here's the thing. The issue with the Generation 3 impact driver has only afflicted 1% of Milwaukee M18 fuel Generation 3 impact driver users. So here's the thing. If you have one of the impact drivers and you're having a problem with bit retention, all you need to do is go to MilwaukeeTool.com, go to their e-service center, and file a complaint if and only if your impact driver is not retaining its bits. Or you can call 1-800-SAWDUST. Milwaukee Tool will make a repair or send you out a different impact driver. This is the thing though. If you're not experiencing the issue, then what's, what's the problem? We have a lot of you asking us, hey Vince, how do I know if I have the Generation 3 or the Generation 3.5? If you have Generation 3, you would know. You'd not be able to hang on to your driver and drill bits, right? My point is, is that if you contact Milwaukee Tool and tell them that you want them to upgrade their driver, their impact driver, okay, and they say, what is the problem you're having? And, and your response to them is, I'm not having a problem, I just want to have generation 3.5 or the new and improved or two, two balls instead of one. If you're not experiencing the issue, they're not, going, they're not going to replace your impact driver. As far as I know, that's what's been communicated to us. That is what they have told us. How can you make sure that you get 3.5 as opposed to 3? There's only one way that I know of, and that would be to visually inspect the tool. So if you're going to buy at a big box store, the Home Depot, you're gonna to have to ask the Home Depot if you can open up the box, the tool only box or the kit that you're buying and inspect the balls inside the collet to make sure you're getting two instead of one. And if you like confirming whether you're getting a pair of balls or a single one, then smash the like button. At this point, it's the, only, it's the only way to really determine what's here in the undercarriage. I mean, you have to visually look and see what's going on in the insides to really know. But now that you know what to really look for, leave a comment down below. What do you think about the information that Milwaukee Tool has relayed to us? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think they should have done a better job? I will let you all know that we will continue our testing. What we're seeing here with Generation 3.5 is very promising so far, but we are going to pound this impact driver into submission. That's what we do around here. And if you like that, get subscribed and tap the bell because when we break this, you're not going to want to miss it. I also want to say thank you so much to each and every one of you, the very cool gang, because Generation 3.5 would have never happened Without your help, we needed to open Milwaukee Tool's eyes that this was a big problem. And you helped us do that with your comments, with your views, with your tweets, with the conversation that you all started. You are powerful and we appreciate you helping us to get this done. We affected change. Doesn't it feel good? Leave it down below. Everybody, see you all on the next one. Video's over but I know you want more. So this is how you're going to get it. First thing you need to do is pretend you're this guy and you're here at the birthplace of freedom. Now ring that bell like it's 1776 and let all notifications through. What? You're not subscribed yet. Smash this button here. After that, 
watch this video here, here, and maybe over here. See you later.